Hello, let me introduce myself. My name is Peter Vell and I have been a professional cellist in London for many years. I was a member of the London Philharmonic Orchestra and for 26 years a member of the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. I am also a professor of cello at the London College of Music. In latter years I have become known as an adjuster, a dealer and a repairer of string instruments, of course emphasising the cello. I have acquired some technical skills at various institutes and with advice and tuition from Colin Nichols, one of the best luthiers in London. In fact, I made this cello myself. It took a long time. With this background, I feel uniquely qualified to make this video. I will cello show you how a cello should be adjusted and have its measurements correct to make it comfortable to play and also I will show you how to get the best tonal response out of it. There are lots of measurements so it could be an idea to get a pencil and paper. I'm going to now give you some important measurements for the cello. There are three measurements and they are all the most important. The first measurement is from the nut where the strings start to the edge of the cello. Not the purfling, but the edge of the cello. This must be 28 centimetres, no more and no less. Another measurement is from the edge of the cello, here, to the centre of the bridge. The bridge is usually opposite the nicks on a cello. This ideally should be 40 centimetres, but can be a little less, perhaps um, 39 and a quarter centimetres is possible. The reason for these measurements is that um, if you're in fourth position, it's important that your thumb is in the crook of the cello and you're in a comfortable fourth position. If these measurements are not right, you could be back here, which is not very comfortable, or your fingers could be higher here, which is also not good. If you don't play the cello, get a cellist to uh, try this out for you. Another measurement we need to take note of is what's called the projection. You get a straight edge, and put it along the middle of the fingerboard until it touches the bridge. Make a pencil mark here and then measure this distance down to the surface of the cello. This should be 80 millimeters, ideally. If you have a very high arch cello, it could be a little less, but not uh, not much more. Um, if the fingerboard is too low, you can raise it by putting a wedge underneath it. Uh, if it's too high, then that's more of a problem, which may mean uh, resetting the neck of the cello. Now, I'm going to just talk about the measurements and shaping of the fingerboard. This is important for comfort of playing the cello. Um, a good idea would be to, to get one of these, which is an electronic caliper. You can get them on eBay for about 10 quid. The first measurement we need is just the fingerboard across here, which should be about 32 millimetres. Not much less, maybe a little bit more. And here, about 62.5 millimetres. Now the fingerboard is not made of straight lines. If you look along the edge here, have a straight edge along here, it should be a gentle curve all the way along with a gap of about one and a half millimeters here. And the same thing on this side. And the surface of the fingerboard is also not flat. It has a gentle curve all the way along. 
on the A string it should be about one millimeter and on the C string it should be about one and a half millimeters. You have to get an experienced luthier, luthier is a posh word for a violin maker, to do these measurements and shaping because it is, it's not for the amateur. Um, some fingerboards have a flat section under the C string. This is called the Rumberg and it doesn't really make much difference to the, to the playing of the cello unless it's got gut strings when a Romberg might be um, useful because this string vibrates a bit more. The thickness of the fingerboard should be about seven, seven and a half millimeters. And I want to talk about the string spacings and the heights. The string spacing at the nut here should be between 24 and 26 millimeters and at the bridge between 48 and 50. The A string uh, runs a little way away from the edge of the fingerboard, about three millimeters, because if you're, when you're playing, you tend to pull it to one side. So if it's near the edge, it would be uncomfortable. If you have a Romberg on your fingerboard, the C string should not bisect it, but slightly favor onto the G string. Now the heights, you need something like this, which is just a tapered piece of card. You then place it under the string at the end of the fingerboard, note where it is, and then measure it with your caliper. The height of the A string should be about 5.5 millimeters, and the height of the C string should be about 7.5 millimeters. You can add a millimeter onto this for gut strings or if you have a new cello do the same and um, adjust things when the cello has settled down. These are only suggestions and you can alter these heights to uh, suit your prefer preferences but don't make them too low. Something which is often neglected when setting up a cello is the height of the strings at the nut. This should be as low as is practical because if they're high you'll be pushing down every string with more pressure than you need to. The way I do it is to put a nut on it, leave it one millimeter at the A string, one and a half millimeters at the C string and then just file very shallow grooves just to hold the strings. This gives a good low height. An old luthier once told me that he measured it by putting a playing card underneath it to see it was that height. This is a shot just to show you how the A string is a little way away from the edge of the fingerboard. I'm now going to talk about getting the best tonal response you can from your cello. This is covered by three points, the bass bar, the sound post and the bridge. First of all, you need to make a little gauge. It's quite simple, it's just a piece of stiff card which you bend in the middle and make sure that the ends of it are equal. Now for the bass bar, you push it through the F-hole until the gauge hits the bass bar. Then you slide it up to the bridge and obviously where the top thing is, is the edge of the bass bar. The edge of the bass bar should be about three millimeters in from the edge of the bridge. If it doesn't work, um, then you can get different sizes of bridges. Um, a normal bridge is 90 centimeters, but you can get them from 88 to 94. So you'll have to do a bit of measuring to see which sort of bridge accommodates your cello. The sound post is a small post which is placed just behind the treble foot 
of the cello. You can find out where it is by your gauge if you push it in and go like that you can find the outside edge of it. Mark it with a China graph pencil then like this to mark it with a China graph pencil then the soundpost will be here. The soundpost is usually 11 millimeters thick and a good distance from the outside edge of it to the uh, foot of the bridge is about two centimeters. It should also be roughly in line with the middle of the bridge foot. The sound post is adjustable to some extent in that if you move it to the base it will perhaps increase the base and if you move it towards the bridge it will make things a bit brighter or away a bit softer but this is a bit of an art as to doing this. These are only rough indications. I'm now going to give you some information on bridges. This is going to be general as it would take longer than this video to really go into it. There are basically two types of bridges. The Belgian bridge and the Aubert bridge. The Belgian bridge has longer feet and perhaps gives more projection but the Aubert perhaps gives more warmth. These I've just shown you are uncut bridges and should be fitted by a qualified luthier. I used to use exclusively Aubert bridges but I went to a recital not long ago where there were six Strad cellos and they all had Belgian bridges. So I went home, had a little bit of a think, tried a few things out and found that Belgian bridges will suit some cellos especially perhaps modern cellos. A good idea is to, when you have your bridge fitted, is to leave it a bit thick and then play on it for a few weeks and then take it back, get a shaving taken off, try it again until you feel it's right. Don't go too far. Cheap cellos can often benefit from judicious recutting of the bridges. Now strings. A few years ago I wrote an article about strings and things now due to new technology have changed a lot. Some old favourites have been superseded and new ones are constantly arriving. The main thing is to buy the best strings that you can from good makers. The strings on my best cellos, which I use, cost nearly £300 a set. The Chinese cheaper instruments that are imported are pretty good now in the terms of woodwork and the way they're constructed but their strings are awful especially the C strings so when you're buying a set of strings concentrate on the C because this is the one that benefits most from a good string. A tip you can do is that some strings are graduated so if you tune your cello slightly sharp and it's better, get a heavier gauge of string. If you tune it slightly flat and it sounds better, get a lighter gauge of string. Just a few things I've missed out in this video. First of all, um, the width of the bridge feet should not be 90 centimeters, but of course 90 millimeters make for a very silly bridge. Another thing is always have ebony fingerboard. A stained hardwood one doesn't work, it can't be adjusted and it's just a nuisance. Same with pegs, make sure they're hardwood, not painted and well fitted. If you want to not have um, fine tuners on your tailpiece, you can use geared pegs. I find them very good and they're not that expensive and don't look too bad. This video 
has been long, involved and perhaps a little boring, but please take out of it what information you need. You can visit my website where there are other videos including one on how to choose a cello and as it says I will cheerfully give unlimited advice.